and uh, I got lucky. I got lucky and, you know, had a couple of really amazing moments on that way up and, you know, and, and, you know, signed to Def Jam and, you know, 35 years later, like, you know, but you said something really important and I want to just clarify. You said hip hop is only this part of my story. It's incorrect. Hip hop is this part of my story. It's all of this. It's the artist, oh, the artistry. Damn, Ali. damn, can't just hold on. Ali just hit the floor, ladies and gentlemen. He's he's down for the count, ladies and gentlemen. He went all the way down the stairs. He's, he's a TKO. The club is a TKO right now. Anyway, so um, no, you know, no, hold on. I want I want to clarify that. No, 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 no. You meant the music part, and and no, no, and music part. But that's still not totally accurate because okay. I owe the culture everything. It's not just the, the small part of my career that was a music career. It was everything because the indoctrination of the culture from a marketing perspective, a promotion perspective, an engagement perspective, again, words I didn't even understand. I was just doing them by osmosis. I was doing them because I had no choice. I did radio promotion because the guy who did radio promotion at Def Jam, Wes Johnson, may he rest in peace, said, yo, I ain't bringing no crackers to black radio unless you know these motherfuckers forward or backward. And he didn't use that word. He used the N-word. <laughs> and he said, if I'm bringing you crackers to mine, y'all better know them frontwards and backwards. And he gave me an R&R &R and a billboard. He's like, yo, go study. You're going on the road in six weeks. I'm not taking. <clears throat> so I had no choice. I really had no choice. If, my, if I was going to have any success, A, I had to prove that I respected the culture, regardless if I was making records or not. But B, I had to respect the people that were going to give me the lane in the first place to allow me to have a career. Because the Beastie Boys, they didn't really help much. You know, as much as we want to give love to the BC boys. And, and, and I'm the first one to say, yes, we should give them love. There are plenty of videos, please. I'm begging y'all go to YouTube. See what LL was saying about the Beastie boys in 87 about touring and what they did and how it was divisive. They had giant penises on stage, pouring beer on, on women and they made it harder not only for white groups, for rap groups to tour in arenas. LL, Chuck, they were vocal about how fucked up the BC Boys were. So now here we come, we're culturally ramen, like in the street ramen. We're not brass monkey, fight for your right to party. We're stepping to the AM, gas face, Brooklyn, Queens, probably and vomit. Like we going in and... We had to show respect, show appreciation. And it wasn't just by saying thank you. We had to understand these people. We had to understand these human beings that were going to bump a black artist off their playlist for us. Mm. And I didn't take that lightly, not one day. It was very, I was very cognizant that if I was gonna be on the urban chart as a rap artist, that I was taking the place of a black artist, period. There was no getting around that. There wasn't, oh, well, you're dope. And no, fuck that. There was a Alexander O'Neill record that was gonna get bumped. There was a Freddie Jackson record that was gonna get bumped. There was a Houdini record that was gonna get bumped. There was a thousand black, Luther, somebody was getting bumped who was darker than this for my record on their chart. So the only way to really show my appreciation is to tell Helen Little, I know your history. To tell, you know, Mr. Simpson, I knew his history. To tell Steve Hegwood, I knew his history. To tell Benny Brown, Tony Gray, and these are all program directors from the late 80s, early 90s, who were the gatekeepers at some of the biggest urban mainstream stations. Because back then there was no Hot 97, there was no Power 106, it was BLS, it was Kiss, it was yep. Black Radio. And what does that mean? It's R&B, it's what it meant, period. What's up guys, thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, 
feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.